Boy, do we have a great show for you today. We have a lot of great content to share with you, so let's get started. I'm Dynasty. And I'm Angelica. And, and you're, you're watching, watching BG on TV. Striking. 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 And welcome to the Happy Tummy. I am BG. Striking. I am BG. Striking. I am BG. Striking. Strive for perfection, accept reality. We're going to start off with Sarah Sanchez's segment about St. Baldrick's, which will give us more insight about this foundation. Let's check it out. I've been involved with St. Baldrick's for nearly two years now, and um, it's been a wonderful ride. And um, during this time, I've had the opportunity to follow a lot of students um, and children with cancer. And I've um, I followed their journeys, their successes, and their downfalls. Um, I've gotten to experience success like being able to go home for Christmas or uh, getting a life saving treatment. And I've also experienced some sad times um, like a treatment not working or cancer warning. And uh, that's really hard. And even through all these times, these children still, they've been like a beacon of hope for me these last two years. If they can continue to have a smile on their face while they're facing such a terrible thing, why can't we? The biggest way to get involved with St. Baldrick's, the meat and potatoes, is to be a shavy. Uh, it's standing in solidarity with kids with cancer. So to shave your head is to, is to say, I, I don't know what you're going through, but I support you and you're beautiful and you can do this. So you're giving them hope. They don't have the choice to go through all of that, but as shavies, we do. And we make the choice to support them and to go through that. And the moment that my hair is shaved, it's grown back already, you know? Like, you might not be able to tell, but it's, it's growing back. And, and it's growing back even, and it's growing back the original color. And so I just, I encourage anyone to know that you have the choice for the people that didn't have a choice. And that hair grows back, and, and it, it, you have to be patient. But, um, but it grows back, and we have to give these children hope that their hair will grow back too. I chose to participate in St. Baldrick's this year because I'm the philanthropy chairman for Sigma New Fraternity here at BGSU. There's a total of nine members uh, raising money and six of us are shaving our heads today. I'm extremely nervous about having my head shaved, but I'm also really proud uh, just because I know uh, what the money's going to. Sigma New Fraternity signed up kind of late uh, in December, so uh, we didn't really have as much time as I would have liked, but we still raised nearly $700, so I think that was what I was mostly thinking about before I stepped up onto the stage. No doubt in my mind, this has been one of my favorite experiences of college. I think St. Baldrick's has a great impact on the campus. I think it's a great, great form of charity that BGSU performs, and it really shows how much we as a school care about reaching out and helping others. I've never met one ugly bald person because there's beauty in the vulnerability of being a shady for our kids with cancer. It's amazing that they raised more than their goal this year. I know, and it's their second year on campus. Yeah, and it's for such a great cause. Such a good cause. So, do you believe in wizards? I don't, but I can't speak for Matt on this one. <laughs> My name's Matt, and uh, I never got a a, a wizard letter in the mail when I was 13. So I've I've mostly been uh, I'm a homeschool wizard, and I get most of my stuff from, uh, you know, the on online, like, um, you know, a lot of the websites like spells dot wiz, stuff like that. It's I just do my own kind of stuff, and I do a lot of meditating, to go through, and uh, a lot of again online schooling. 
to learn most of my spells, you know, the patterns and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm about 20 now, so I've been doing it for a while. Alohomora. Lumos. Stop living under the stairs. You, you have a bedroom, dude. You have a bedroom. Expelliarmus. I do... I keep, we keep the towels in there. Like, you're using the towels as blankets, and it's weird. Like, you have a bed. I've seen it. Do you enjoy living with him? Living with Matt is... Um... How can I put this? It's an adventure. Like, he'll just be doing his spells or whatever, and it's pretty Hello, funny, Hamora. usually. But, Hello, um... Hamora. A lot of the time... Hello, he just Hamora. kinda... Well, okay, so for example... He tends to just put on my grandmother's, like, blanket that she gave me and pretends it's an invisibility cloak. Hey, Jacob. I don't understand. Hey, hey, he just kind of... You're, like you're, you're, you're just in the door. You're just in the door. Because I can just take Just in the door. Take you're it. in the door. I'm going to compete against Raven You're Claude not tomorrow. actually I'm flying. Just, I'm you're not the, flying. I'm you're Raven not Claude. flying. I'm a beater in the next match. You don't even know what that means. The worst. Do you support his decision of becoming a wizard? It's not that I don't support his decision. I would just ma much rather appreciate if he didn't act like this anymore. The it's starting the to get sucked. really, really annoying and embarrassing. Okay. So sometimes if he leaves his wand around, I'll kind of take it and maybe hide it so he doesn't know that I have it and maybe that'll help, you know. Hey, sir, what's that in your head? What? What's that in your hand? It's a drumstick. Ooh, that looks like my wand. It's not, Matt. We've been over this a hundred times. Uh, this is a drumstick. Mm. Remember you used to play the drums? No, that's my wand. No, that's, it's a drumstick. Can I have my wand? No. Please, I, want, I, want, I need my wand. You don't need it, I'm Matt. You're not a wizard. School, but... Matt! Oh my goodness. I, can't, I don't know if I can handle this much longer. There's a troll! Oh. I think I have the potential to really uh, succeed and do a lot of good. Now that the Dark Lord's uh, he's been taken care of. He's after. He's not a friend of mine, but like the this guy um, Harry, he he defeated the Dark Lord with a book and a dagger. But uh, so I think there's a lot, a lot of good to be done. A lot of res a lot of uh, a lot of new spells to be made up. Confindo. Confindo. What are you doing? I'm cooking. No, you're not. Nothing is happening. Confindo. Stop that. Oh Confindo. Yeah. He's never really tried to cast any spells on me. He once tried to put soy sauce inside my meatloaf and say that it was polyjuice potion? I, it, it didn't work. Tommy, what'd you do with my wand? Recently, about maybe two weeks ago, he started coming up to me, like whispering in my ear. At first I thought it was really cute, then I realized it wasn't even English. What are you doing? Speaking snake. Stop it! <laughs> I don't think we'll be dating much longer if he keeps acting like this. It's kind of getting really, really weird. Um, and then he'll walk around sometimes and start saying spells. Like this one time, I think he tried to kill me. He said, Avada Kedavra? I don't know. And he like waved his wand at me and I got really freaked out. Transfango. Avada yeah. Kedavra! Did you just try to kill me? I, I, you scared, you scared me. You, you were wearing black and... Really? I, your own girlfriend, you tried to kill me. With your fake wizard stuff. It's, uh, it's not fake, it's just, it's part of, I'm... I can't even do this. I'm trying to learn... No, to Matt, no. We're over. I can't, dark, I can't do this. The Dark Lord, Bye. man, you scared... Uh, Snape said he had to defend the whole kingdom... <laughs> You right, dude? I think I discovered a a magic like cloak. 
I disguise as myself. I'm I'm intangible. Like no one can see see, see me. They see right, right through I can, me. I can, I can, I'm so I've been you. using it to sneak stop around punching. You're just punching. and stop spy it. on them. Like, I because I think it. Tommy's up to something. So even though he really wanted to be a wizard, I don't think his girlfriend was too into that. Definitely not. <laughs> she was definitely an unhappy camper. I know, and you know, she was really upset with his wizard-like behavior. He was having so much fun with it, though. I know, so it's like, if you want to be a wizard, then go ahead and be a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> well, up next, we have a true life story about our very own Derek Joes as he struggles to quit smoking. time I was 18 I uh, had worked my way up to about a pack a day after I graduated I, I worked for my dad for a summer and I uh, smoked I, I like got up to a like pack and a half two packs a day and that was when I started trying trying to quit and that was I'm 25 now I was 18 then so that was a, that was a while ago that like I knew I've known for a long time that I wanted to quit smoking and I've tried multiple times. Mostly, I think that the reason that I haven't quit is that I just I like smoking. I enjoy it. I like to smoke when I drink. I like to smoke after a meal. I like to smoke uh, like first thing in the morning. I like to smoke in the car and. Um, being young and not seeing any of the uh, negative side effects of smoking quite yet because it's you know it's definitely like one of those delayed things you don't you know I'm not gonna go to the doctor tomorrow and find out that I have lung cancer I'm gonna find that out when I'm 65 you know and until then it's just a party you know but I, I, I'm aware of the negative health risks so I need I need to quit so this is this is me deciding that it's time to stop. I think that I think that I can do it. You know, it, it's easy to say that you're you're gonna quit when nobody is uh, really watching. You know, when, when you're the only one, you have to hold yourself accountable to. But um, I'm making myself accountable to uh, everyone. strong motivator. So I think that uh, what we'll, what, uh, what, uh, what we're going to try is that uh, for the first, uh, we're going to try to do, uh, we're going to try to quit using the nicotine patches. Probably the hardest part about quitting smoking is dealing with your triggers.
I've, I've actually quit a few times for like extended periods, but then I always just end up falling back into it. That's actually, actually that's probably what I'm, I'm most afraid of, is that I will quit for an extended period, and then I'll just fall, fall off the wagon, uh, like, like I've done uh, several times before. And then if that doesn't work, I suppose there's always e-cigarettes. Stay tuned to see if Derek quits smoking for good. It'll be really interesting to see if he will continue to stay on track as well. Well, meanwhile, <laughs> let's check out another this or that. I'm always ready for a great laugh, so let's see what they have to talk about this time. <laughs> Newborn human? Camel. Well, I kind of slightly hate babies. So. Me too, it's alright. If I need something to carry things, I'm not gonna pick a baby, but if I need something to like, as a tax write off, I'm not gonna pick a camel. I'm gonna go with a camel. So I guess baby. I pick baby for tax write off. My mom or beard? My brother had a beard and he would always like rub it on my face. Sounds traumatic. It was pretty traumatic. So I don't like beards because they're like scratchy and he would do it just like be mean. So I'm gonna <laughs> go with your mom. Not like not a mom, your mom. Yeah. She ain't brought me food. She did. She bought a Chinese food. And I can't guarantee that having a nice beard would get me free Chinese food. So I'm gonna pick your mom, final answer. Candy or America? <laughs> I want there to be America in the world. <laughs> I just want to go to a store and buy some America candy. That is absolutely no question. <laughs> Existentialism or a sea otter? I think sea otters because they're so cute. Existentialism isn't, isn't cute? No. You don't think it's cute? No. I'm going to go to sea otter. Adorable. Well, sea otters do this really cool thing where they, they, hold, they it's called rafting, and they, they hold hands so that they don't float away when they're sleeping. But they also murder and eat baby seals. So I'm going to go with existential. Roman or cake? As in me? Yeah. I mean, Roman's really cool. They can't eat Roman. What kind of cake? <laughs> Everybody says that. Uh, really? Red, yeah, yeah. Red, yeah. Like, well, that's pretty cool, but... Uh, dude, red, red velvet. velvet. Ooh. Red velvet. What, what do I have to... Okay, I'm gonna have to go red velvet cake because I am me. So, like, what? A burrito? Or John Stamos? I have to go with Uncle Jesse. John Stamos. Burrito. Mom's love? Or a toaster? <laughs> oh. When I think of mom's love, I don't think of just humans. I'm thinking of like like grizzly bears, and like if you go too near a grizzly bear nest yes. or a home, I don't know, a mother grizzly like hunts you down and just murders you, and that's pretty cool. And I don't think a toaster would help me much in that situation. So I'm gonna go with mother's love okay. in the event that a grizzly bear attacks me. They come up with the most random answers for that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like that Q&A though, where do they come up with that stuff? I have no idea, but they must have some creative minds. Definitely. <laughs> 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 Lastly, we'll meet up with Richard Sanders as he attempts to teach us how to make a PowerPoint. Hi everyone, welcome to How To with Richard Sanders. I'm Richard Sanders, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a PowerPoint that will knock your audience's socks off. Now, the first thing in making a great PowerPoint is to turn on the computer.
Hi everyone, I'm Richard Sanders, and today I'm going to teach you how to fix a computer. Now, the most important thing in fixing a computer is to remove the screws from the plate that protects the innards. You'll find that plate usually in the back. Okay, today we have our resident technician, Craig. Hi, Craig. Hi, Richard. So, what can you tell me about screwdrivers? Well, screwdrivers are a tool that are used to apply screws to an application. Okay. Now, are they all the same size or do they come in different sizes? Well, screws come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, some of the shapes you'll see are flathead and uh, Phillips, and they come in a variety of lengths and thicknesses. And uh, what do the office computers usually use? Well, typically I'd say office computers use a hexagonal screw. Okay, and where can we find hexagonal screwdrivers? Well, if you actually look behind us, uh, you will not find any. What? Uh, you will not find I, any. I, I, I heard you, Craig. How can we not have a hexagonal screwdriver to fix the computers? Well, we don't have any hexagonal screwdrivers because um, we don't fix computers here. I can send you in a voucher if you want or... But we're shooting video now, Craig. I understand, but I really can't help you here, Richard. Fine. Well, gang, I guess we're going to get the screwdriver ourselves. Richard, I cannot let you do that. Try and stop me, Craig. Richard, please. I will have to call my boss. You do that, champ. We do not need another incident. Richard, come back. Goodbye, Craig. Richard. 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 Ra Hi everyone, I'm Richard Sanders, and today I'm going to teach you how to purchase a hexagonal screwdriver. The most important thing when you purchase a hexagonal screwdriver is to get a hexagonal screwdriver. Alright, let's go to the front. Now, the most important thing that you cannot forget is to always remember to pay for the hexagonal screwdriver. Hey, how's it going? I'm oh, fine, how are you? Good, that's it? Yeah. Oh. We don't accept cards for any purchases under $20. Why? I don't know, that's just what my boss said. If, if you don't understand, how am I supposed to understand? Look, I can go get him. No, for it's, you. it's it's fine, it's, it's, it's fine. C can I just please pay with my card? Unless you want to spend like 15 more. Oh hours. my god! Why, hey everyone, Richard here. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to get money out of an ATM. Step one, get your bank card. If you don't have one, get one. Step two, wait in line. You're done. Okay, step three, put your card in the machine and put your pin number in. If you don't have a pin number, get one. Next, you'll want to get some money out of the bank. For example, $20. Then you'll pull the money out of the ATM so that you can buy your stupid screwdriver, fix your stupid computer, and do your stupid PowerPoint. Thank you for watching How To with Richard Sanders. I'll see you next time. how to make a PowerPoint, but I do know how to use an ATM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to use an ATM, Angelica. Well, there's just a little thing that I didn't know still. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but don't worry, we'll be back with some more great things. If you enjoyed what you saw today, be sure to check out our previous episodes on wbgu.org slash TV. And if you're interested in staying connected with BG on TV, follow us on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.